Hi my dear students welcome back to another session on your plus 2 english course we have already completed the first two blocks of your course book and now we are proceeding to the third block which is titled challenges of life in this block we are going to meet two great indians two youngsters who have made a difference indeed a big difference in the lives of a lot of poor people in our country one is irfan alam the founder and chairman of saman foundation you could see his photograph here irfan alam who organized the, the rickshaw sector in bihar and other north indian states and second one is uh, miss shaheen mistri see her photograph here miss shaheen mistri a social activist who has dedicated her life for educating the hapless children in the slums of mumbai and their success stories uh, would certainly inspire you to take up such challenges in life their success stories would inspire you to do something remarkable to make a difference in the lives of others and they have proven to the world that success is not just making money it's all about pursuing excellence uh, to make a difference in the society so dear children now we are proceeding to the first unit of uh, this block it is titled uh, a three wheel revolution it's an interview with mr irfan alam but what do you understand from the title a three wheel revolution we have already heard about a uh, green revolution white revolution etc etc but what is this three wheel revolution we can guess that it is something related to rickshaws because they are the only vehicles that run on three wheels but it's not about uh, auto rickshaws that we are familiar with it's rather about uh, cycle rickshaws and we haven't seen too many cycle rickshaws in kerala but uh, if we go to north indian states uh, we could find plenty of them and why this unit is titled uh, a three wheel revolution because uh, what irfan alam has done in the rickshaw sector is nothing short of a revolution he has single handedly transformed the lives of hundreds of thousands of rickshaw pullers in north india and at present there are five black rickshaw operators under samman foundation five black and his business model has the potential to transform millions and millions of others in our country because uh, at present uh, there are about 10 lakh uh, rickshaw pullers in our country sorry 10 million there are about 10 million rickshaw operators in our country so his business model has the potential to transform all these lives and it is in recognition of this uh, in recognition of this uh, innovative business model that he got an invitation to attend a global entrepreneurship summit which was held in washington dc in the year 2010 and at this conference president obama himself complimented mr irfan alam's efforts by saying you are doing a tougher job than me president obama said to mr irfan alam you are doing a tougher job than me and you know if fan alam was just 27 at that time so dear children we are going to watch a short documentary on samman foundation you could see what if fan alam has done to transform the lives of these poor rickshaw pullers in our country once you watch that we'll be coming back to read up this interview with if fan alam Samman rickshaw faith in the cause can do miracles rickshaws being the cheapest mode of transportation in the country have provided cost effective and efficient taxi service for millions of indians yet the pullers have been continuously exploited by the owners as they do not have adequate money to buy their own rickshaws although 70% of indians live in rural areas migration to larger cities in recent decades have led to exponential rise in metros like delhi kolkata Mumbai, Hyderabad and Chennai. 
The worst of all, in spite of their hard labor done by the 10 million rickshaw pullers in India, they do not command any respect in the society. Every life has equal value and money empowers life is the core value on which Samman is working for their empowerment and for their families as well. What's innovative? While remodeling the cycle rickshaw designed by IIT, the weight was reduced to the old one while adding features like provision of newspaper, water bottle, first aid kit, music and insurance during the travel. Concessions are provided by the brands that are advertised through them, issuing identity card and uniforms to the pullers, maintenance of the rickshaw on daily basis, social gathering with the mainstream people and evening classes for the pullers are some of the other features of the innovation in the organization. A saving account has been opened for these pullers in Dena Bank and 200 rupees is deposited every day. A mere sum of 30 rupees is taken as rent for the yard. The organization also tackles poverty, not only as a facilitator or medium, but also as an advocate for them. Samman's multilateral operation provides a platform for discussing issues and increasing awareness of rickshaw operators' life and livelihood. Infrastructure created, two cycle yards constructed. Loans are provided to them against the savings that these pullers have done in Dena Bank. Getting respect from the society and fortnightly social gathering with the mainstream society. Drastic reduction of alcohol consumption. Samman Rickshaw, faith in the cause can do miracles. Hope you have enjoyed watching that documentary on Samman Foundation. You have seen how Irfan Alam could transform the lives of a, a lot of a poor rickshaw pullers by setting up this social enterprise called Samman Foundation. And in that sense, he could rightly be called a, a social entrepreneur. A social entrepreneur. Who's an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is a person who sets up a new business enterprise. A person who starts a new business enterprise is called an entrepreneur. Can everybody find success as an entrepreneur? Can everybody succeed in business? No. Everybody can't be successful in business. And what are the qualities required to be a successful entrepreneur? Here I would like to tell you a story. A story that has been repeated uh, quite often in business circles. A shoe company once sent two of its market executives to an African country. The purpose was to study about the market possibilities of shoes in that particular country. And the first person visited the northern part of the country. He spent a few weeks there, carried out extensive research on market possibilities and he came up with his findings. He reported to the company, here no one wears shoes, no one makes them or sells them, so there is no market for shoes in this country. This was his finding. On the other hand, the other person visited the southern part of the country and he too spent a few weeks there and he carried out extensive research on market possibilities and he too reported to the company. What was this reporter? He reported that here no one uh, makes shoes uh, or sells them, no one wears the uh, shoes here. So we could certainly find a huge market here provided we carry out an effective advertisement campaign. So see how different their findings were. And of these two, who do you think uh, is a better entrepreneur? The first or the second one? It is certainly the second one. Second one is a better entrepreneur because he could identify an opportunity. He could find an opportunity where others don't find in. So take the case of Irfan Alam. A lot of people travel in rickshaws every day. Millions of people travel in rickshaws every day. But only Irfan Alam could identify that opportunity. He only could find the potential of a huge market in rickshaws. So that is the most important quality of a, an entrepreneur. He should be able to identify an opportunity. He should be able to find an opportunity. And what are the other qualities required to be an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur? First of all, creativity. As Irfan Alam is, a, an entrepreneur should come up, uh, come up with something creative, some creative, innovative ideas. Creativity is a must. Then secondly, courage. He should have the courage to take risks. Taking risks is very important in business. 
And an entrepreneur should have the guts to take risks in, in, in business. And thirdly, determination. So an entrepreneur must have determination to succeed. And the fourth, and fourth one, passion. Passion for that business. Passion is intense love and fondness for something. So passion for one's, uh, what one is doing. When, when one is doing a business, you should have passion for that. And finally, strong people skills. What are people skills? The ability to communicate effectively with people, especially with subordinates, with clients. So these are all the essential qualities required to be a successful entrepreneur. But Irfan Alam is not just an entrepreneur. He is a social entrepreneur. And who is a social entrepreneur? And how is he different from other entrepreneurs? A social entrepreneur is a person who sets up a new business enterprise with an intention to address a social issue. So intention in uh, setting up a social enterprise is to solve a social problem. In that sense, uh, Irfan Alam could rightly be called a social entrepreneur because uh, he has uh, tried to solve the problems of rickshaw pullers. By setting up Samman Foundation, his intention was not to earn a lot of profit for himself. Uh, it was uh, to help these rickshaw pullers to, to live a better life. Uh, and he succeeded in that. In that way, he is a very successful social entrepreneur. So, dear children, now we are going to listen to this interview. This interview was uh, uh, given immediately after Washington Summit in 2010. It was given to Sujada Ramprasad. So, we would uh, watch uh, the first part of the, uh, the interview and then come back uh, for a discussion on that. Congratulations on your achievement. When and how did you conceive this idea? I was 17 years old at that time. I was traveling in a rickshaw and in the middle of the journey I was very thirsty. I asked the rickshaw puller if he had any water. He said that he did not carry water bottles because he did not have money to buy and stack them. It set me thinking and I immediately realized that there was a market for selling water bottles and rickshaws. The very next day I talked to five rickshaw pullers and gave them each eight bottles of water. I told them that for every bottle they sold we would make a profit of 2 rupees, which we could split in half. The very first day, I made a profit of 8 rupees. You were very young when you came up with and executed this idea. Yes, I guess entrepreneurship is in my blood. I had an interest in business from a very early age. During the stock market scam in 1992, my father and many of his friends lost a lot of money. That is when I started taking interest in the stock market and began researching on various companies. Interestingly, using my advice, all of my father's friends recovered from their losses and most of them started making profits. This enabled me to start my first portfolio management firm at the age of 13. When my parents found out that I was dabbling in the rickshaw sector as well, they pulled me aside and asked me to stop doing it and concentrate on my studies. So I shelled it, but my interest never waned. I kept reading and researching on the sector all through my college days in Pondicherry, where I pursued my Masters of Foreign Trade degree. Dear children, you have just seen how Irfan Alam showed signs of promise at a very early age itself. He says that entrepreneurship is in his blood. And when did he first realize that there was a market for selling water bottles in rickshaws. When did he first realize that? When did he first conceive that business idea? He realized that there was a market for selling water bottles in rickshaws at the age of 70. He was traveling in a rickshaw and on the way he felt very thirsty. And he asked the rickshaw puller if he had any water, if he had any drinking water. And what was his reply? He replied that he didn't I have money to buy and stack water bottles. And this gave him the idea that there was a, a market for selling water bottles in rickshaws. And the very next day he started this business. And how much profit did he make on day one? On day one he made a profit of 8 rupees. He talked to 8 rickshaw pullers and gave them 5 bottles each. And on the first day they sold 8 bottles and whatever profit they got 
for every bottle they sold they got a profit of 2 rupees it was shared between irfan alam and the rickshaw puller and that way he made a profit of 8 uh, rupees on the very first day itself and uh, at what age uh, did he uh, start his portfolio management firm at what age uh, did he start his portfolio management firm what is a portfolio management firm or uh, who is a portfolio manager see it here who is a portfolio manager a portfolio manager is an expert uh, in stock market he gives you advice uh, on uh, when to invest uh, where to invest how much to invest you can't straight away go to the stock exchange and invest your hard earned money in shares because it's very risky you need to get the advice of an expert such an expert is called a stock portfolio manager so he started his portfolio management firm at the age of 13 at the age of 13 itself he could start his first portfolio management firm and what gave him the courage to do so at such an early age what gave him the confidence to start this portfolio management firm at at the age of 30 so during the 1992s uh, stock market scam in mumbai mumbai stock exchange scam his father and uh, his friends lost a lot of money and uh, it was uh, on his advice in fans advice that they could recover their losses even at that age ifan was closely monitoring the mumbai stock exchange he was monitoring the market fluctuations and he could advise his father and his friends on where to invest and how to recover their losses so when they could recover their losses on his advice he got the confidence to start his first portfolio management firm at the age of 13 Okay, then why did uh, Irfan have to shelve the idea of organizing rickshaw pullers? Uh, he was doing that uh, that business. Uh, he was trying to organize rickshaw pullers, and why did he have to finally shelve that idea? To shelve means uh, to set aside, uh, uh, to keep it uh, for a later time. Why did he have to shelve that idea? He had to shelve that idea because uh, when his parents came to know that he was dabbling in the, in the rickshaw pull, uh, rickshaw sector, they Uh, told him to stop doing it and to concentrate on his studies so on the advice of his parents uh, he had to shelve the idea but his interest never waned he kept on researching on this sector he worked very hard on this sector all through his college days uh, in pondicherry and dear children now let us move on to the next part of the uh, interview let us uh, watch the next part and uh, we'll be coming back uh, after watching the next part What was the spark that revived this idea? In 2006, an Indian TV show called Business Basica launched an entrepreneur hunt and solicited ideas for new businesses. I entered this contest with a business proposal. My idea was to organize the rickshaw sector and make it a profitable venture. According to my proposal, rickshaws were to be redesigned so that the spaces on the vehicles could be sold for the purpose of advertising and brand promotion. Also I indicated that additional revenues could be made by selling products like water juice biscuits mobile carts and newspapers to the passengers I won the show and was offered the seed money of rupees 150 lakhs Was someone started with this seed money No I very soon realized that the entry barrier to this business was very low The only way to sustain this business was to earn the loyalty of the rickshaw pullers. I wanted to provide insurance, ID cards and uniforms to the rickshaw pullers. I wanted to run this as a not-for-profit organization. To be honest with you, I was not thinking about social entrepreneurship at that point. I just thought that it would be the best way to sustain the business and the easiest way to get banks to give out loans. Since the organizers of the TV show did not agree to this model, I ended up refusing the seed capital. Dear children, you have heard Irfan Alam say that uh, he had to shelve his business idea on the advice of his parents. And what was the spark uh, that revived this idea in 2007? What was that spark? In 2007, a TV reality show named Business Basica solicited. new business ideas 
Solicit means uh, to invite. Her. They invited new business ideas and Irfan Alam entered this contest uh, with his business proposal. What was his business proposal? His proposal was to organize rickshaw sector to make it a profitable venture. And his idea was to redesign rickshaws in such a way that there was enough space uh, for brand promotion and advertisements. Uh, you could see the clipping here. This was his idea. He suggested that rickshaws should be redesigned so that the, there was enough space for advertisements. Uh, and additional revenue could be ensured uh, by giving advertisements. And he also suggested that uh, uh, rickshaw pullers could earn more income by selling water bottles, uh, uh, juice, uh, recharge cards, uh, newspapers, etc. So how much uh, uh, was he offered as seed capital on winning this uh, this uh, TV reality show? On winning the show, how much was he offered? Uh, he was offered a huge amount. Rupees 150 lakh he was offered as seed capital. It was just seed capital, not prize money. What is seed capital? Seed capital means uh, the money offered uh, or money given to start a business. Uh, that is seed capital. He was offered uh, 150 lakh as seed capital. And was Samman started with this seed money? No. Why did he have to turn down that offer? He turned down that offer because he understood that uh, the entry barrier to this business was very low. He understood that he didn't uh, uh, need too much investment uh, to start this business. Uh, what is entry barrier? Entry barrier means uh, the obstacles or barriers that one faces by starting a business. Uh, entry barrier differs from um, business to business. For example, if you are starting a vegetable shop, uh, the entry barrier is low. That means you don't face too many difficulties. But if you are starting a drugstore or a medical shop, the entry barrier is very high. It means you face a lot of difficulties. A lot of issues are there. So he understood that the entry barrier to this business was very low. So what was the only thing he required to sustain this business? The only thing he required was to win the loyalty or confidence of the rickshaw pullers. And how did he think he could win the loyalty of those rickshaw pullers? He thought uh, he could win their loyalty by giving them ID cards, uniforms, uh, and then helping them get loans from banks, etc. And this was the only way he could sustain that business. Uh. So he turned down the offer and then uh, he started uh, uh, Samman uh, Foundation on his own. So dear children, we, have, uh, we are now proceeding to the next uh, part of the interview. You please watch the next part and we'll be back uh, for further discussion. When did this turn into a true social venture? As I understood more about the lives of the rickshaw pullers and their plight, it turned into a social cause. There are about 10 million rickshaws operating in India. Most of the rickshaw pullers do not own the rickshaws but instead rent them at the rate of 30 to 40 rupees per day. The money they make after paying the rent is barely sufficient to sustain the families. They continue to remain at the bottom of the pyramid. I thought if I could create an organization that would empower the rickshaw pullers and find a way to increase the overall revenue, it would be a win-win situation for both. I firmly believe in CK Prahala's idea that business can be successful by targeting the bottom of the pyramid. Suman was finally founded in 2007 with the seed money from family and friends. Can you describe the operation model of Samman? When a rickshaw puller approaches Samman, we first go through a verification process. The operator is then given training on basic etiquette and traffic rules. Then we approach the banks and help them get a loan for a new rickshaw. Previously, banks were very reluctant to give loans to this section of the society. Now since we stand as the guarantors, these rickshaw pullers have access to credit. The rickshaw pullers feel truly empowered when they drive their own vehicle. We provide the rickshaw pullers with accident and health insurance. Each driver is given an ID card and is required to wear a uniform while operating the rickshaw. 
the rickshaw pullers now become a part of the samman family dear children here the fan alam says sir how his business idea gradually turned into a social venture when did it turn into a social venture when he understood the, the problems of uh, the rickshaw pullers in our country when he understood the plight of rickshaw pullers in our country his business idea turned into a social venture and what is the plight of rickshaw pullers in our country if an alum says that there are 10 million rickshaw pullers in our country 10 million is one crore almost 1% of our population he says there are 10 million rickshaw pullers in our country and most of them don't have their own rickshaws they rent the rickshaws at a rate of 30 to 40 rupees per day so whatever they earn after paying their daily rent is not enough to support their families and so always they remain at the bottom of the pyramid they remain poor so this is a the income pyramid or the economic pyramid okay unfortunately in india most of the people are poor and the wealth is uh, uh, concentrated in a few people at the top of the pyramid so the poor rickshaw pullers remain poor forever and if an alum believes uh, in ck prahlad's theory ck prahlad in this book ck prahlad uh, was uh, an economist uh, an economics professor and he wrote a book uh, on how companies could earn more profit by targeting the bottom of the pyramid so according to him it would help in both ways uh, it would help uh, the poor come up uh, uh, economically they could uh, get uh, more more uh, money at the same time companies could earn more profit so if an alum believes uh, that by targeting the bottom of the pyramid uh, he could uh, earn more profit so by targeting the poor rickshaw pullers uh, they could be helped to come up uh, in life uh, at the same time samman foundation also could earn profit so this is his idea and when and how was samman foundation founded uh, samman was finally founded uh, in 2007 with seed money from friends and uh, family and what is the operation model of samman when a rickshaw puller approaches someone they first go through a verification process they uh, they uh, go through verifying the identity of this person and once uh, uh, they, uh, the person is found to be suitable he is given training in basic etiquette and traffic rules and then uh, he is taken to a bank uh, and uh, uh, on the guarantee of uh, samman foundation he is uh, uh, given a bank loan and he goes back uh, with a brand new rickshaw and he feels so proud of uh, 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 driving his own rickshaw so that is how samman provides them self respect or samman samman means samman means self respect and dignity so a rickshaw puller who has been uh, pulling someone else's rickshaw for the first time is proud that he is a rickshaw operator now not just a rickshaw puller he is the proud owner of a rickshaw and he lives with dignity for the first time in his life and that is the difference that samman uh, foundation has made in the lives of these rickshaw pullers so dear children let us uh, move on to the next part now we'll be coming back uh, after you watch uh, the next part of the interview how does samman help increase the revenues of the rickshaw pullers how does samman itself gets its revenues Samman rickshaws are designed in such a way that they have plenty of space to display advertisements. Several local and national brands place their advertisements here. The advertisements revenue is split in half between Samman and the rickshaw pullers. Also, rickshaw pullers can choose to sell water, fruit juice, cell phone, prepaid cards, etc. In that case, they come to a central rickshaw yard in the morning and load up their wares. at the end of the day the profit from the sales is split between them and samman the money that rickshaw pullers earn by transporting the passengers is solely theirs the revenue of our rickshaw pullers have increased 30 to 40% there are several other benefits on which we cannot put a monetary value rickshaw pullers now have a sense of belonging and empowerment
operators and their spouses attend free evening classes called Samman Gyan. Samman has brought dignity and inclusion to those who were previously considered menial labors. In addition, I am very happy to say that Samman itself is profitable. Last fiscal year, we made a net profit of 8 lakh rupees and a revenue of 50 lakh rupees. My mentors have been emphasizing the importance of sustainability. Does Samman get directly involved in microfinancing? No, we do not directly microfinance the rickshaw pullers. We just enable the rickshaw pullers to get finance from the banks. Instead of paying rent for decades, the rickshaw pullers only pay the bank loan as installments and eventually become the owners of the rickshaws. Dear children, here uh, Ifan Alam says uh, how Samman Foundation could make a huge difference uh, in the lives of these rickshaw pullers. And how does uh, Samman ensure uh, that the rickshaw pullers now earn more? In what all ways uh, rickshaw pullers uh, are now earning more than before? They are getting a share of uh, uh, the advertisement revenue. Advertisement revenue is shared uh, between the rickshaw puller and the Samman Foundation. And they can sell uh, uh, the items like uh, water, juice, uh, uh, biscuits, uh, mobile cars, etc. And here again, this revenue, the profit they make uh, on selling these items uh, is shared uh, between Samman Foundation and the rickshaw pullers. And the money they get from passengers uh, for uh, transporting passengers uh, is solely theirs. Uh, Samman doesn't take uh, a share of that. So in all, they are making more uh, money these days. Uh, they, uh, their income has gone up by 30 to 40 percent. This is what Irfan says. Uh, Samman Foundation members uh, are now making uh, 30 to 40 percent more money. And he says that uh, there are other benefits as well. What are the other benefits uh, of being uh, a Samman family member? Now they live with uh, dignity. That is the first and foremost thing. They live with Samman or dignity. They live with self-respect. Self they have a sense of belonging and uh, a sense of empowerment. And their spouses uh, and, and children also get the benefit. Uh, they are attending evening classes. Saman has arranged uh, evening classes uh, for uh, the uh, rickshaw pullers' uh, children and their spouses, their wives. In that, their, their families also are benefited. And how much uh, did Saman uh, Foundation make uh, as profit uh, during the previous fiscal, the year 2009? You remember this interview was given in 2010. And how much profit uh, did Saman Foundation make in the year 2009? They made a net profit of 8 lakh rupees. Their total revenue was uh, total uh, revenue was turnover was uh, 50 lakh and out of that they made a profit of 8 lakh rupees. And this they achieved in just 2 years. Saman was founded only in 2007 in just in 2 years time they could make a profit of 8 lakh rupees. That means uh, this business model was found to be very very successful. And uh, does someone uh, directly mic microfinance uh, uh, the rickshaw pullers? Uh? They never finance rickshaw pullers. Uh? They just arrange bank loans. Uh? They stand as guarantors. Uh? These rickshaw pullers uh, get loans for directly from banks. And someone has the role of uh, guarantors. Uh? So this is what we have seen here. Now let us move on to the next part of the interview. The last part of the interview, let us watch that and come back. Aren't cycle rickshaws a dying breed? Rickshaws continue to be a popular mode of transportation in most parts of the country. The number of rickshaws in New Delhi has actually increased by 20% in the last 2 to 3 years. The reason for this increase is that it has become the choicest form of transport to carry passengers to and from the metro stations. Also. I personally think rickshaws are the vehicles of future. They are environmental friendly. We have an R&D wing that is working on a solar powered fiberglass rickshaw. What were your experiences at the Presidential Entrepreneurship Summit at the United States? I met some truly great people. 
I was indeed honored to talk to the Nobel Prize laureate Muhammad Yunus. He invited me to Bangladesh to help set up a similar organization for the rickshaw workers there. What is your advice to students on entrepreneurship? An entrepreneur is one who identifies an opportunity and puts in conscious effort to make it an enterprise. People generally discourage youth from treading this path, but it is time to start thinking about entrepreneurship as a career as it can be an important tool to tackle unemployment in the country. It is important to dream, but it is equally important to take calculated risk to achieve your dream. Thank you very much for sparing the time to talk to us. We wish you the very best for your unique journey. Thanks. It is with the blessing of my mentors and well wishers that I carry my journey forward. Dear children, you have just watched the last part of that interview and in that last part Irfan Alam refutes the charge that rickshaws are a dying breed. In fact, he argues that uh, rickshaws are the vehicles of the future. And his argument sounds very convincing. And he gives three reasons in support of his argument. He says rickshaws are going to be the vehicles of the future because uh, rickshaws are getting more and more popular these days. The number is not going down, it's rather going up. He takes the case of uh, Delhi. In Delhi alone, the number has gone up uh, by 20% in 2 to 3 years. And he says that uh, rickshaws are the choicest form of transport to carry passengers to and from metro stations. And with the introduction of metro services, uh, metro rail services in most cities, uh, rickshaws are going to be very relevant because uh, rickshaws uh, are uh, the easiest uh, to take passengers from uh, their home to metro stations and from metro station to their homes. So thirdly, he says uh, rickshaws are, are environment friendly and for this reason alone, rickshaws should remain here for long. And he says rickshaws are going to be the vehicles of the future. And uh, what is his advice to students? Uh, what is his advice to youngsters of this country? He says uh, that youngsters, the students uh, should consider entrepreneurship more seriously. They should Th start thinking about taking up entrepreneurship as a career because that alone could solve the problem of unemployment in this country. The government can't provide employment to all the people of this country. So the youngsters should come forward and then take up uh, entrepreneurship as a career. And he says uh, it is important to dream but at the same time it's equally important to take risks, uh, to take calculated risks uh, to fulfill those dreams in life. This is his valuable advice to students. So dear children, we have come to the end of it and I'm sure you have a lot to learn from this, uh, this wonderful personality. So he conceived a business idea at the age of uh, 17 and uh, by the age of 27 he got global recognition and he was complimented even by uh, uh, Barack Obama, the President of America. So that was the kind of journey uh, we saw uh, him making. From nowhere, uh, he rose up to the heights of success. Uh, so you have a lot to learn from this man, Irfan Alam. So try to read more about him so that uh, you could also do something remarkable like this in your life. So we have already had a very long session. Uh, goodbye, children. <laughs>